and here my dear friends is one more video for you don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share with a friend hey guys uh, dr. Ray uh, the king of beauty and health I want to talk a little bit about hair uh, so this is, has changed a little bit today uh, women are losing more hair women are losing more hair 62% of all women are now losing hair probably most of them are uh, chemicals from hair treatment coloring uh, bad shampoos etc uh, which kill the follicles so statistics which are shocking is that at 40 most women have lost 50% of their follicles shocking uh, but also my personal theory I think that uh, uh, it's not a personal theory and we know that fat cells, adipocytes, uh, they create androgen in women and the androgen, which is basically the male hormone in the woman, can cause hair to fall. Okay, and of course, uh, through all millennia, men have uh, lost hair. Genetics, two types of hair loss. There is a somatic transmission which is passed from father to son, not through the sex genes, but through the normal uh, genes, okay? Somatic transmission. Um, I, for example, my father's completely bald, my uncle's completely bald, my brother's bald. Everyone for hundreds of years in my family are bald, and I'm not. How is that possible? And in my case, it was transmitted somatically because my grandfather on my mom's side is full of hair. So there is a somatic transmission, but there is the X-linked transmission, which you're more familiar with, which is transmitted from your mom because her father was bald, okay? So if your mom's father, your grandfather was bald, you will have a very good chance of being bald. If your father was bald, you also have a very good chance of being bald. Let alone all conditions which are not genetic, such as alopecia areata, alopecia universalis, which are autoimmune, you fighting yourself, it can be as simple as stress, or it can be dietary, or unknown ideology unknown okay so there is a whole spectrum of causes of baldness luckily most baldness is genetic and that is what we're gonna hit on of course always consult with a dermatologist I'm not a dermatologist I'm a plastic surgeon I just happen to love you guys and I want to help out a little bit and I digest the information and bring it down to the most simple language most common element okay so we talked about the ways the hair loss can be perpetrated now let's talk a little bit about uh, how we can treat it how we can treat it for men very very simple for men there are only two treatments medicinal and uh, one uh, invasive treatment which is short of surgery I have it here in my hands minoxidil was discovered I don't work for this company or anything is topical so what's causing the follicle to shrivel and the hair to become progressively thinner and thinner until it's no longer visible dihydrotestosterone at the follicular level so we tried in medicine to attack problems from different ways for example when I take a surgery I'm gonna give you five anti-nausea medications treatments which attack you from different sides it's like going to war look when Eisenhower attacked Normandy he attacked by air he attacked it by sea he attacked it by land and each one of those three modalities 
he had several uh, uh, ways uh, at sea, uh, landing craft, he had submarines. He, uh, in other words, we want to attack the problems from many different ways, chemical, mechanical, surgical, etc. Okay, so we can use a cream called minoxidil, uh, which blocks dihydrotestosterone. It has a vehicle which pen lipophilic, which penetrates the skin and helps block dihydrotestosterone. Systemically, we use finasteride. One company is called Propicia. So Propicia, which is finasteride, blocks dihydrotestosterone systemically through your arteries, okay? Now, one modality which has been discovered recently to cause hair growth is platelets. So we take your blood the day of the procedure, we spin it, we decant the red blood cells and other materials we don't want, and we keep just the platelets. And we inject the platelets into your scalp, which helps regrow the hair. Okay? So there are two non-invasive and one minimally invasive treatment. I'm going to talk about surgery in just a second. Now, women cannot do one of these three. Talk about platelets, minoxidil, and finasteride. Women cannot do finasteride, especially pregnant women. Okay? They cannot. It will cause severe uh, problems, can cause severe problems with the development of the fetus and in the woman herself. Okay? So we do not do that. Uh, platelets, women can do platelets. All right. Side effects. Let's touch on the side effects very uh, quickly. There is a spectrum of side effects as with even aspirin. However, the one people are most concerned about is the impotence. Okay? So, of course, these are strictly, strictly uh, methodically tested drugs. And it has been discovered that at one milligram, which is the dose given, these uh, sexual problems, which is erection problems, decrease in desire, and so on and so forth, are not an issue, okay, or much less of an issue. However, at higher doses, it is an issue. So follow, as usual, uh, follow the uh, instructions of your doctor, which is one milligram per day. Um, say, uh, there is an error, uh, accidental error in dosage, forgot, took extra. Uh, studies have shown that upon cessation of taking finasteride, uh, these problems are reversible. Okay? Uh, I've taken it all my life, and um, my gosh, all my life, 20, at least 20, 25 years. And I, um, both products, and I have a very beautiful family, <laughs> and uh, it's not been a problem, and it's not been a problem. And I know many people in my world have taken it, it's not been a problem. Okay, so uh, let's touch a little bit uh, on um, the surgery. Surgery today is amazing, 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 amazing. So you see that with finasteride and uh, Monoxidil, I my hair continues to grow, and I have a lot of hair. You know, I'm 55, almost 55. So let's talk about the surgeries very quickly. We start out with that corn road ap uh, appearance, uh, which is terrible, with uh, plugs which had many hairs in it. Today, the um, follicle transfer is very microscopic, and we transfer one. Uh, follicle at a time, one to three follicles at a time, and we don't no longer make those enormous incisions, harvest sites in the back of your head, which were very visible. Today we, uh, with robotics, 
we're able to take one follicle at a time and transfer one follicle at a time. The criticism is that we, as mere mortals, cannot create the distance that God creates, that nature creates, however you view this. We cannot create that. And I kind of concur with that some. Uh, the hair is not as thick as uh, normal uh, hair, which has not lost its volume from genetics. In that case, we have the option of flaps. Uh, the way that's done is we put expanders here. Expander is simply a balloon of water, okay? Uh, a balloon, a surgical balloon, and we inject saline, salt water. So the balloon is placed uh, on the sides of the head, and the surgeon injects uh, every week, every two weeks, say 50 cc's of uh, saline. This causes expansion of your scalp. In a few months, the balloons are removed, and uh, it's like that a breed of dogs, I'm sorry to use such a crude example, Chappé, where they have lots and lots of loose skin, like that. Uh, the the uh, expanders, balloons, are replaced, and the bald spot is removed because baldness has a pattern to it, has a pattern, specific pattern to it. So it almost never falls from the side, and it's only from the coronal and the frontal areas usually okay this area here so that tissue is thrown away so you don't so the follicles don't have to be so far apart and that skin from the side is moved up basically very simple so remember you have flaps but the recovery of the flaps is much much longer but the hair is much much thicker okay so most people tend to elect the chemical treatments, uh, some platelets, uh, less frequently but very very efficiently they choose hair follicle transfers and a very small group choose the flaps. So the flaps give by far the best results. Uh, the hair follicle transfers are very good but best people to uh, prevent okay best to prevent so if you have the genetics I would consider start taking it before you lose your hair okay much easier to maintain it than to regrow it later on okay so dr. Ray uh, uh, finishing this little segment on alopecia hair loss I love you I want you to look good please take care of yourself this time okay